Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to the second session of elementary school classroom in Islam. Though this poem is little dark and dingy, but still I would like you all to maintain the flow and uh, please pay attention to every word that I utter in this session, because every line, every word is important, and there are n number of questions which could be framed. I would discuss that also later on. and this poem is a little tricky poem as i have told you before also it is not that easy to comprehend so please be very attentive and uh, wherever you have any issue get back to me immediately the rest i would like to tell you about mr spender he is a pacifist and he is a scrupulous objector he doesn't like uh, people who are being you know ridiculed people who are being victimized he wants to talk about the social equality and rights because if you are born in a world like this every individual has got equal rights so that's what bothers him and that's what makes him talk about those children who are living in those uh, alpine valley and uh, the region of uh, that place the region is austria and all those children are deprived of their basic rights which bothers him and hence he is talking about them and wants all those people who could do something about them the government the authorities who could deal with their issues to please do it so that they can come out of that cramped hole and make it large they could dream of something they could aspire and come out of that uh, darkness in their lives so that you know the generations after generation that follow will not be in that same environment and grim scenario so he uh, pleads he requests people to look into the matter and do the needful and all his writings basically deal with this um, central idea that is social injustice or he talks about equality for one and all he talks about the core central theme talks about two incompatible worlds all right a world which has two different sides one is of the haves and the other of the have nots but there are glaring differences between the two sides one side has access to everything and access of everything whereas the other side is deprived of the three basic meals a day the poet talks about this situation wherein education is the birth right of all then why are these children deprived of it why are these children compelled to poverty poverty is poverty why are they ridiculed why are they victimized and why are they not driven towards the light of education which could be make a difference in living which could be the sole uh, thing or which could be the only thing which could revive them of the atrocities that they are i begin the paraphrasing the explanation of the poem far far from gusty waves this children's faces like rootless weeds the hair torn round their pallor the tall girl and her weighed down head the paper seeming boy with rats eyes the stunted unlucky air of twisted bone reciting a father's gnarled disease his lesson from his desk at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes live in a dream of squirrels came in tree room other than this the i would like to tell you all that this uh, scenario is of a classroom in the slum area a classroom which is deprived of all the basic, basic amenities of life a classroom which is deprived of the modern amenities uh, of life it looks very very worn out and it looks very uh, uh, derogatory or it is in a very uh, you know uh, dilapidated condition so then uh, in that scenario in that situation there are children who are sitting there now the poet talks about the faces of these children far from far from gusty waves gusty is windy breezy so then waves are all powerful power packed and on top of it if a wave is 
comprising with breezy winds. Winds and waves are a very deadly combination. So when we see these two, they are powerful, full of energy. These children's faces are far away from it. And if you see, far has been repeated twice. There's repetition here. Just to stress that these children, their face should be bubbly, chirpy, full of life. But uh, on the contrary, these children are far away from the enormous power of wind, the enormous power of waves. They look lifeless, colorless and there's no shine on their faces. Like rootless weeds. Now what are weeds? Weeds are unwanted plants, we all know that. Here, rootless. The, root, the weeds also do not have roots. Just like these children have no backbone. They don't, they don't have any uh, parental help. They don't have any uh, strong foundation. Similarly, they have been compared to rootless. And weeds, why? Because weeds are unwanted. Whenever you see a, a garden or a uh, field which has crops on it, they have weeds so the farmer takes out the weeds and throws away they are all unwanted and they will not be planted anywhere you have never heard anybody planting only weeds so similarly they have been compared to those weeds which are unwanted and they are not welcomed anywhere the hair torn around their pallor hair is all messed up undone and it's all very very you know dirty they don't even look presentable their hair falls on their Palo, palo is face. So their hair is falling on the face. It is not properly done. They look dirty and they look uh, not even presentable. The tall girl with her weighed down head. Now there's a tall girl in the class but her head is hung low. Why? Because her uh, uh, body, the posture is very good, nice, tall and she looks young. But then her head has gone down due to poverty and responsibilities. She is so overburdened with responsibilities that her head is hung low. The paper seeming boy. Now there's a boy again in the class who is compared to a paper. Just like a paper is thin lean similarly this little thing is also thin and lean and he has rat's eyes why rat's eyes beautiful comparisons i love the comparisons here just like a rat is always you know searching for food and shelter similarly this little thing is always scrounging for food and shelter Students, I would like to repeat it again. Now, this entire setup is based in a classroom, that too in a slum area where the condition of the classroom is worn out, dilapidated. The walls and all look very, very worn out and it was not even colored. The furniture is not even there. It was just like a makeshift arrangement where these slum children used to sit and study. And um, the poet says, far, far from gusty waves so then he means that the faces of these children they were far away far far away from the enormous waves just like the waves have got breezy winds okay gusty means breezy windy so the waves are always a combination of winds plus waves and that makes them enormous and gigantic but the faces of these children are worn out the faces of these children are lifeless. They don't have any energy, enthusiasm to live life or deal with the situation. So hence they are all compared to faces without any color, without any vibrance, without any energy or enthu in life. So that's why the poet says far, 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 far has been repeated to show you the importance of this word and to stress on it that they were far away from the waves which have got power and energy in it. They were like lifeless and colorless and they were all pale like root, uh, rootless weeds just as the weeds are unwanted, not planted by anybody. Similarly, these, uh, these children, they grow of their own. They come out of their own and there's no parental support. There's no background to them. So they're all alone, all by themselves, trying to cope with life, trying to make a living for themselves. That's why rootless because 
uh, there's no support there is no foundation and weeds are unwanted similarly they are also unwanted they grow all by themselves the hair tone round the pallor means their hair is all undone it is all falling on uh, their faces and they look uh, scrawny they look uh, dirty untidy and uh, i mean obviously they don't even, they are not clean they don't come up in a hygienic scenario they don't uh, follow sanitize sanitation or whatever so hence they look uh, scrappy and uh, they look scrubby they look scrawny and all those words because they looked untidy and their hair was all coming on their face pallorous face the tall girl with her weighed down head means there's a tall girl in the class but then her head has bowed down low with because of poverty and the added on responsibilities see a child is you know trying to make himself stand somewhere by education a child tries to learn adapt grow and develop it is not his or her responsibility to go out and earn money it is the responsibility of the one who has given birth to that person but in that tender age when instead of going to the school and making herself something she has to go and earn the bread and butter for the family that is the most traumatizing part because of which this tall girl her posture has become lean and I mean, lean and bend down her head had bowed down because of the added on responsibilities in her life. The paper seeming boy, the paper seeming boy is a metaphor. Why metaphor? Because it has been compared to a paper. See, I have, I have told you before or not, I don't know. Simile is whenever you have words like like and as. Whenever I compare, she's as beautiful as a rose. She is like a dream. Okay, then that's a simile because there's a comparison. You, we use words like as and like. Metaphor is, it is a direct comparison with one thing to the other. Paper seeming boy, I, don't, I do not say the boy look like a paper. I said paper seeming boy. The boy look like a paper. Why? Because paper is very lean and thin. Similarly, this boy was also lean and thin because he was deprived of nutrition. He was de deprived of good food. He was uh, deprived of all the three course meals that we all enjoy. Then comes his rat's eyes with rat's eyes. A beautiful comparison and a perfect comparison in this scenario. Why? Because just like a rat is always searching, scrounging for food and shelter. Similarly, this little thing was also searching for food and shelter. The prime objective was to search for food and feed himself and his family. Coming to the slides once again, the stunted, unlucky air of twisted bones. Stunted means deformed, not grown properly. Unlucky, starging, ill-fated. And air means obviously one who passes on the legacy. My father, then myself, then my children. Like that, the hierarchy that goes on. So then this child has got the deformed, not formed properly or the ill fate, or you can say he was like, unfortunate uh, why because he has got that disease of twisted and you know ill-formed deformed bone from his father he has not got anything other than the misfortune and the deformities that he has got from his father and uh, this is his fate like for example, Ambani's son will inherit his property, his wealth, his house, X, Y, Z, whatever. That's the fortune that Mr. Ambani has left for his child. But this poor chap has got, uh, uh, what do you say, the disease which his father has passed on to him as legacy. His father was not able to give him the land, wealth, property, but a disease which he has inherited from his father of the deformed bones, legs, hands not formed properly and his uh, limbs did not work properly. They all look uh, twisted and turned. Now, another case, his lesson from his desk. He was sitting and trying to absorb the lesson from his own desk. Okay, this was one case. At the back of the dim class, one unnoted sweet and young. Now we have another child at the back of the class who is very sweet, young and he is unnoticed. Why? Because he is busy in his own world of, in his own world of dream and fantasies. Not even a part of the class, he is sitting and dreaming there and uh, doesn't even know what is exactly happening. His eyes live in a dream. 
Now his eyes are full of dreams. He has his own castle of dreams. He is thinking of his own world of maybe coming out of that cramped hole of trying to make a big uh, living or trying to um, make a world for himself which is away from this darkness. So he is trying to build up his own world away from the uh, unhappiness or darkness that prevails in his present world. Then he thinks of the squirrel's game. Squirrel, why? Because as you have seen, a squirrel is very active, running around here and there. Uh, okay, and there is a hole in the tree room. Tree room has been referred to a hole made by the squirrel, which is its house also. Whose house? Squirrel's house. So the squirrel goes inside the house, keeps the food, come out again, fetches something, goes and keep it inside. So this boy was also looking at the squirrel, trying to follow the squirrel, what it is doing and trying to weave dreams for himself so that he doesn't uh, have to slog and struggle in his crammed hole. Children, as I have explained the first paragraph, I would like to show you the meanings of it. Gusti, I have told you, it means breezy winds. Then pallor means uh, dull phase. Stunted means not fully grown due to malnutrition. Nal means knotted or rough. Weeds means unwanted plants that grow on their own. Paper seeming uh, boy means very, very thin and uh, he looks like a sheet of paper. And uh, air means successor. Now students, the stunted unlucky air means, stunted means obviously deformed, not formed properly due to malnutrition or due to lack of food in their life. As you know, it is very difficult for them and their parents to fetch them three course meal. Half of them are earning for themselves and fetching it for their own self. Unlucky means, as you know, ill-fated. They don't have the fortune. They don't have a lot of money. Uh, fame position to pursue their dreams ahead to maybe follow their instincts they don't have those things at all and they were the unlucky heir means obviously as i've given an example before also mr ambani's son would inherit all his wealth property and everything whereas in their case they have not got anything by legacy they have only taken up their father's disease which they have got which they have inherited from uh, him and because of which they have a deformed body structure because of which they have uh, not grown limbs uh, they have the limbs are you know all twisted and turned they don't uh, look like proper developed limbs then uh, they have taken up that from his father Nal means rough okay or you can also see in some books twisted it is not even grown properly it is not formed properly one word is deformed body structure due to his father which he has got uh, as a legacy nothing other than that then uh, there's uh, this child who is sitting there and uh, he's uh, trying to absorb the lesson there's another child who is sitting at the back of the class whose eyes are busy dreaming about something and just like a squirrel is frisking and frolicking a squirrel is always frisking and frolicking why because it is jumping from one end to the other so here this little thing was trying to see this squirrel who was going inside his tree room now, there was one question in 2018 or 19th paper when i went for correction i still remember what is this tree room this tree room was a room or a hole made by a squirrel inside a tree wherein it stays and the child was looking at the squirrel and its tree room why because the squirrel was frisking in keeping the food again frolicking out so this was going in and coming out this frisk uh, this squirrel was doing it and this child who's in his own world of dreams and fantasies in his own world of la la land wherein he was looking at the squirrel and being happy that one day i'll make my own world one day i'll make my own living away from the darkness away from the filth of the slum and make it large so we have seen this paragraph i've showed you the meanings already these are the meanings of it and i've read it across also moving on to the paraphrasing of the first stanza which i've already explained it to you the poet describes the children who study in an elementary school which is set up in a slum area. The poet says that the faces of the children are gloomy and without liveliness. They are not full of energy like other kids of their age. 
these children are compared to unwanted weed here the writer wants to say that these children seem to be undesirable like the unwanted weeds which nurture on their own in the fields their hair is not gracefully done it falls on their pale faces as if they have been torn apart the children are untidy they haven't combed their hair then he describes a tall girl who seems to be burdened by poverty her head is bent maybe because of the tiredness or shame there is another boy who is so feeble and thin that he has been compared to a sheet of paper the boy's eyes reflect greed and he wants to achieve everything then he describes another student who is physically disabled the poet says that this boy is unlucky because he inherited a disease from his father due to which he has a deformed body instead of getting any facility from his father he has received a disease in heritage this disabled boy is sitting on his bench and is reciting his lesson at the back of the class in dim dark area was a small boy who was not visible to the poet as he was sitting in darkness the poet could see his eyes which were bright and full of dream he was not paying attention to the class it seemed as if he he was rather interested in playing with squirrels in the tree room I hope the first paragraph and the paraphrasing is clear. You please look at the literary devices now. Children are compared with rootless weeds. I have told you wherever you have likened as it is a simile. Then we have a metaphor also. A boy is compared to a paper, but metaphor and simile. The only difference is in metaphor we straight away stated that this is this, whereas in a simile we have. Um, like we have words like like and as that's the biggest uh, sign of a simile and then far far just to stress on that word far repetition has been used wherever you have repeated words or lines that's repetition 